In this video, you'll learn how to generate a PDF file in PHP. We'll develop this form and the code to process it, which will generate this PDF, including dynamic data, styling, and images. All the code developed in this video is freely available, and a link to download it is in the description. Let's start by creating a new file in the web root folder called generatePDF.php and we'll add the PHP opening tag. To generate the PDF, we'll use the DOM PDF package, which we can install using Composer. So on the command line, in the web root folder, we'll run the Composer require command to install the DOM PDF library and its dependencies. By default, this will install the package to the vendor folder. In the Generate PDF script, to load the package's files, the simplest way is to require Composer's autoloader. We pass in the path to the autoload script, prefixed by the dir magic constant, so we can get the absolute path of the script. Next, we can create a new object of the DOM PDF class, which is in the DOM PDF namespace. If you don't want to prefix the class name with its namespace, then you can import the class into the current namespace with this use statement. Then we can remove the namespace when we create the new object. To specify the content for the PDF, we pass some HTML to the object using the load HTML method, passing in a string containing the HTML. The package is basically an HTML to PDF converter. So as we'll see shortly, all formatting is done using HTML and CSS. We'll start, however, with just a simple string. Then, to generate a PDF from this content, we call the render method. This generates the PDF document in memory. To send it to the browser, we call the stream method. Let's give that a try. If I open that page in the browser, a PDF file is generated, which I'll open with the PDF Viewer application on my system. The application you use may differ. The content of the PDF document contains the text we passed to the load HTML method. Note that the file name of the PDF is document.pdf. This is the default. We can change this by passing a different value as the first argument to the stream method, for example, invoice.pdf. Now if we run the script again, the file name of the generated file is set to that value. How the PDF is displayed depends on the browser settings. For example, my browser is configured to always ask what to do with a PDF file. Yours might automatically display the PDF inside the browser using the browser's built-in PDF viewer. The DOM PDF default is to suggest to the browser that the PDF file should be downloaded using the supplied file name. We can change this so that it suggests the PDF is displayed in the browser using the browser's built-in PDF viewer. We do this by passing in an array as the second argument to the stream method, containing an element with the key of attachment and a value of zero. The default value for this is 1, which is what tells the browser to download the file instead of displaying it. Note that these are just suggestions from the web server. How the PDF is handled depends on your browser configuration. Now when we generate the PDF, it's displayed in the browser and isn't downloaded. Although there is a button to save the PDF if you do need to download it. Next, let's add some more content and some styling to the PDF. First, we'll create a new variable called HTML that contains an HTML heading level 1 element. Then we'll concatenate another string to this, including an HTML EM tag, which typically displays the text it contains in italics. Then, instead of this literal string, we'll pass this variable to the load HTML method. In the browser, now the PDF contains the heading, shown in a larger font, 
and the text inside the EM tags is displayed in italics, just as it would be displayed in a browser. We can add styling using CSS. For example, let's add a style attribute to the H1 element, specifying the font color as green. Now in the browser, the heading is displayed as green. We can also include images. I've added this example.png image to the root folder so we can include it in the output. Let's append an image tag to the HTML string with the source attribute set to the name of the image. In the browser, however, instead of the expected image, we get this placeholder and the error message image not found or type unknown. This is because, for security reasons, the DOM PDF package is restricted to reading local files from the directory where the package is installed. As the package is installed in the vendor folder, it can't read the file in the web root folder as it's higher up in the directory structure. We can change this by setting an option in the DOM PDF object. When we create the DOM PDF object, we can pass in an array of options. The chur root option specifies the effective root folder for local files. Note that option names are case sensitive. Instead of hard coding a path in here, let's use the dir magic constant again to get the directory of this file. Now in the browser, the image is displayed. There's an alternative way of setting options for the DOM PDF object instead of passing in an associative array like this. To do this, first let's import the DOM PDF options class into the current namespace. Then, before we create the DOM PDF object, we'll create an options object and call the setChirroot method on it, passing in the value we want as an argument. Then, when we instantiate a new DOM PDF object, instead of the associative array, we pass in the options object. In the browser, this still works as before. There's a list of available options in the official documentation. When the PDF is generated, the default page size is letter and the default orientation is portrait. These are two options that are set using a specific method on the DOM PDF object. So after we've instantiated the object, we call the setPaper method, passing in string arguments for the paper size, in this case A4, and the orientation, which we'll set to landscape. Now in the browser, the paper size and orientation of the generated PDF are set to A4 and landscape respectively. In addition to these, we can see that the document has other properties, like title, author, and so on. This is metadata about the PDF that the user can see if they view the document properties like this. We can set these using the addInfo method. For example, let's set the title to an example PDF. Note that this call has to be made after the call to the render method and that the property keys like title are case sensitive. Here, for example, title has to begin with a capital letter. Other properties you can set are the creator, author, and so on. Now, when we generate the PDF, the title is set to that value. Next, let's add some user supplied content to the PDF. First, let's create a form to capture some data from the user. So we'll create a new file called form.html, and in here we'll add the HTML doc type, the HTML, head, and body tags. Inside the head tag, let's add a title and a meta tag specifying the character set. Inside the body tag, we'll start with a heading element, then a form that uses the post method and submits its data to the generate PDF script we've been working on. Inside the form, let's add an input for a name value with an associated label. 
then an input for a quantity value, again with an associated label. Finally, a button to submit the form. Let's have a look at that in the browser. And there's the form with its two inputs and the submit button. Let's very quickly add some styling to this. The quickest and easiest way to do this is to use some classless CSS. There are many of these available. My current favorite is water.css. All we need to do to use this is to copy this style sheet link and paste it into the head element of the HTML. Now in the browser, the form has some nice basic styling just by adding one line of HTML. Then in the generate PDF script, we can get the data from the form. Before we create the HTML, let's get the value of the name input into a variable and the same for the quantity. To keep this simple, I'm not going to do any validation on this input, just get the raw values from the form. Then let's insert these values into the HTML. Instead of hello world, we'll insert the value of the name variable directly into this string. Then let's append another line to the string containing the value of the quantity variable. Again, to keep this simple, I'm not sanitizing or filtering any of these values. Let's give that a try. If I enter some values into the form and submit it, we get a PDF that contains the values from the form. To add some more content to the PDF, we need to add some more HTML. However, building an HTML document like this by concatenating strings in PHP is very error prone. You have to make sure quotes match and it's difficult to debug, test and modify. Instead of doing this, if you have more than a small amount of HTML, it's easier to put it in a separate file that just contains HTML. So let's create a new file called template.html. In here, we'll add the HTML doc type, the HTML head and body tags. Inside the head element, we'll add the meta tag specifying the character set as UTF-8. If we add a title element in here, then the content of that is used for the title of the PDF document. Alternatively, you can set the title using the add info method as we're already doing. Inside the body tag, let's add the image tag we're already using, then a header element containing the text invoice. Following that, a paragraph containing the name. We'll see how to insert the value from the form in a moment. Before we add any more HTML content, let's see how we can load this file and generate a PDF from it. In the generate PDF script, at the moment we're building a string containing the HTML, then passing this to the load HTML method. To load a file containing HTML, there is a load HTML file method that takes the path to the file as a parameter. Let's give that a try with the template.html file we just created, and we'll temporarily comment out the load HTML call. Now when we submit the form, we get a PDF that's been generated from the contents of the template.html file. However, this will just load the HTML file and doesn't give you the opportunity to change the contents of the HTML once it's been loaded. For example, to insert some values from the form. This method is useful if you have a file that contains HTML that you don't want to change, but for our purposes, we want to be able to insert some values from the form into the HTML. So instead of doing this, we'll stick with the load HTML method. I'll leave the method call in here, but comment it out so that it's in the source code. Instead, we'll load the HTML from a string. Rather than constructing the HTML by concatenating strings, we'll load the template.html file, which we can do using the file get contents function. Let's give that a try. And the PDF is still generated from the template.html file. Now, however, we can insert the values from the form. To do this, let's add a string that we can easily search for that we can replace using the string replace function. Note that using curly braces like this isn't PHP syntax, 
but this is the sort of variable that you might use if you were using a templating engine like Twig or Blade. Then, once we've loaded the HTML from the file, we can use the string replace function to replace this string with the value from the form, which is in the name variable. Again, using two curly braces like this is just an example. You can use another technique to replace placeholders in the HTML with other values if you prefer. Now when we submit the form, the value is inserted into the body of the PDF. Let's add some more content to the template. We'll add a table with a header, two columns and one row in the body. In the second column of the body, we'll add another placeholder for the quantity value from the form. Following this, let's add a footer element containing some sample text. In the generate script, when we replace the name placeholder, let's add the quantity value from the form too. Let's give that a try. When I submit the form, there's the table containing the quantity value from the form, followed by the text in the footer. This clearly needs some styling though to make it easier to read. We've already seen how we can use inline CSS to add styles. For example, let's add a style tag to the table cell that contains the quantity value, aligning the text to the right. We can also use internal or embedded CSS to add styling. For example, let's add a style tag inside the head element and make the table 100% width. And for the footer, we'll center the text and make it italic. Now, when we generate the PDF, the table is 100% width and the footer text is centered and italic. We can also use external CSS to add some styling. Let's use an existing style sheet for this. Gutenberg is a CSS framework specifically designed for styling HTML for printing. This is available on a CDN, so we can just copy the link tag that references the CDN and paste it in the head section of the HTML. Note, however, that we need to remove the media attribute so that the styles will be applied when the PDF is generated. Let's have a look at that and it looks like the content hasn't changed and the styles haven't been applied. The reason for this is that access to remote resources like style sheets or images is disabled by default. To enable access, when we set the options for the library, we set the Is Remote Enabled option to True. Now when we generate the PDF, the styles from the external style sheet are applied. The font has changed, the table has borders, and so on. One final thing you might want to do is to save the PDF file on the server once it's been generated. To do this, we call the output method, which returns the content of the generated PDF as a string. We can then call the file put contents function, passing in a file name and the output to save this to a file on the server. For example, this will save the PDF to the file.pdf file in the current directory. Note that for this to work, the web server needs write permission on the specified folder. Now, when we generate the PDF, in addition to it being displayed in the browser, the PDF has been saved to the web server. There's a link to all the code shown in this video in the description, along with links to sites shown and relevant documentation. Please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, and as always, thank you for watching.